Okay. Hey, how are you? Okay. Yeah. This chair. Or are you, did you steal my connection? No, maybe refresh it. it won't even let me rename. No, I think uh, they just heard me, so I don't think so. Please tell them to bear with us one second. Okay. All right. Um, if you all could even let me change this for a, a few minutes, um, Teresha is working on something and we'll be right with you. Okay. The meeting will start soon. <laughs> I'm change my name. And she's one of the attorneys. Right. Yeah. Okay. Who are we missing? Oh, there's people on here. Paste it right there. In the vault, they're all brochures and shit. Open. They're all regarding this? Join the video. Okay, there's my. Yeah. yeah. Person Burnage, we have a forum now. If you want to go ahead and get started, yes, we will. Uh, ready to go. Uh, all right, it's uh, October 29th, uh, 2 p.m. Thursday. The regular meeting of the Code Enforcement Board is now in session. Will the uh, Deputy Clerk, Deputy Town Clerk, please call the roll? Member Lienson? Present. Member Perlman? Present. Member Cherubini. Present. Member Perlo. Here. Member Slam. Present. Vice Chairperson Resnick is absent. Chairperson Burnage. Uh, present. Town Attorney Rubin. Present. And Code Enforcement Officer Manco. Present. Thank you. May we all say the Pledge of Allegiance now. I'll leave. You have to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the flag United, United States, States of America, of America. And, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. Justice for all. First item on the agenda or on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Uh, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? No. If none, is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda as written. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, aye. aye. Opposed, nay. There being none, the agenda is passed. Uh, due to this type of meeting, there are there is no uh, public comments. The next item on the agenda, agenda is the approval of the minutes of September 16th regular meeting. Uh, are there any uh, corrections to the minutes? There being none, is there a motion to approve the minutes of September 16, 2020 of our last meeting? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Been approved. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of uh, September 16, 2020. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Is it passed? Uh, there's no unfinished business, so we move to new business. Would the uh, deputy town clerk read the case that's being presented? Okay. Hold on one moment.
I believe it's case 2020-104. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm turning the page to it right now. Okay. Okay, Thank this you. is, okay. So this is um, case number 2020-104-1016 in court, uh, Kenneth and Carol Pierce, um, code section 30.68G1A. The description is, observe rent, rental of boat slip prohibited within town limits um, to please remove the boat from the property. Um, observe guest boat stored on property for greater than 60 days prohibited. Pl please remove uh, boat from property or have owner ownership change to reflect the same on boat property and the vessel. And then it gives the legal description and um, uh, proposed Boca Heights and the PIN, the PNC number, which is 24 4347 0900002004. The end. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Do any of the board members have any ex parte communications to disclose? All right. Thank you. There being none at this time, I open the uh, violation hearing. Uh, for those giving testimony, please raise your right hand, state, your, state and spell your full names individually one at a time, and state the application you are affiliated with before being sworn in. The uh, deputy town clerk will swear, in, swear you in. Yes. Please raise your right hands. By the authority vested in me as a notary of the state of Florida, do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you are about to give is the truth? the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do. Yes, I do. Thank you. I turn the meeting over to our code enforcement officer for his testimony recommendations regarding this violation. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, code inspector Jason Manco, Town of Highland Beach Code Compliance. This is case number 2020-104, parcel number. Uh, two four four three four seven zero nine zero 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 two zero zero four zero in Highland Beach, Florida. Uh, I've submitted uh, evidence that you have proof of service, supporting documents and photos taken of the property that fairly and accurately represent what was observed during an inspection on September 17th, 2020, which is the initial inspection date, and October 29th, 2020, which is the most recent inspection date. On September 17th, the property was inspected and the following violations were observed. Uh, rental of boat slips within town limits in violation of town ordinance 30-68 G1A and the storage of guest boat in, in excess of 60 days in violation of town ordinance 30-68 G1B. On September 19th, 2020, a notice of violation was sent to the owner listed on the property appraiser public access tax roll, tax roll Kenneth and Carol Pierce. Um, service was obtained by posting to the property address on October 15, 2020. In addition, a copy of the notice was also posted at Town Hall. Property was reinspected on October 29, 2020, and the following violations remain on the property, violations one and violations two. Town recommends 30 days to comply the violation um, at cost of $250 per day and $250 for the cost of prosecution. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Do any of the board members have any questions to uh, ask of Mr. Manco? Um, yes. I, was that two hundred and fifty dollars a day from which from which date were they expired? The sixty days. I guess it would be from the day the sixty days expired, and they were they still had the boat docked there. The town is recommending thirty days for uh, the the property to come into compliance. Okay. Um, at that 30 days is when fines would begin to accrue. So they have another month. They have another month. Well, that then, depends, excuse me. That, this is, this that is depends, depends on what we, that depends, depends on what, on what the board decides. Really decide. It depends on yeah. what we decide. That's the town's recommendation. Correct. That's the town's recommendation. That doesn't mean that's what we have yeah. to uh, agree to. Okay. But in the meantime, they've been collecting a, probably a very nice rental from this person and meanwhile the town is not getting anything how much over 60 days did they go jason this this boat um the 
we had a case that was uh, dropped earlier. It's uh, it's over 60 days. The original case was opened uh, June 3rd. So the boat has been uh, occupying the boat slip since June 3rd. Since June 3rd, July, August, September, October. So we're looking at like uh, 120 days so far around. Jason, uh, can you give us any uh, uh, insight on conversations with uh, the Pierces relative to uh, why they're in violation? Uh, is there any any back and forth that we should know about? Um, I, I just I I, uh, I received an email from uh, Mr. Pierce's legal counsel, which stated that he does rent the boat to um, other people that live within uh, Boca. Uh, Highlands HOA um, that and then the limit on the term a, a guest boat can stay there is that that those are the violations that the ordinance I have a question is it uh, is it renting of the boat or renting of the dock Re oh sorry excuse me if I misspoke the renting of the, the renting of the dock space the, the boat right. is yeah it's it's not registered to the home to the the property owner so um it's either a guest boat or it's being rented. Uh, Mr. Pierce's attorney said that it is being rented just to somebody in the uh, in the HOA. Do we know if this is also in violation of the, the HOA or? I don't know about the HOA. Point? We don't we don't enforce the yeah. HOA. Correct. Are there any other questions? Uh, I have a question. W was this first observed in June? Do we know when it began or that was the first time it was uh, observed? That was the the first time there was a, um, the, the boat was present about a year ago and it was subsequently moved. The boat reappeared sometime mm -hmm. around June. Um, that was the first time uh, I had seen it. Jason, was the boat in Highland Beach previously? I have a question. What's that? Was the boat in Highland Beach previously? I believe it was the same boat at some point, maybe a, a year and a half ago. I think that was the case. That was the case that we adjudicated. It, it did not stay for more than sixty days, though, and I did not know whether the boat was being rented. The boat slip was being rented at that point. All right. Thank you. Somebody which else have a question? Which building is this at? This is in Boca Highlands. This is off uh, uh, the, the northern. Northern Canal off uh, Braemar Isle in Boca Highlands. South end of the town. Okay, yeah. it's right on the border. Yes. Do any uh, board members have any other questions? Well, I'd like to hear from uh, the Pierces. Well, we will, that's, that's the next. Uh, let us handle this, please. Uh, defender may now give testimony uh, and please uh, provide your name and affiliation with the violation. Uh, Attorney David Boyd on behalf of, on on behalf of County Carol Pierce. And Mr. Pierce is here with me as well, although he's identified as Maggie Brawl. Hmm. Are you, are you <laughs> getting a reverberation or can you hear me okay? I'm getting a little reverberation, please. A lot of reverberation. All right because I have a computer set up so that we're socially distanced from my client. So I don't know if we can move Turn that off the audio on uh, one of the phones or computers. Mute that audio. All right, how's that? That's, That's better. better. Oh, now I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right. So, All right, Mr. Roy, go ahead. Thank you. I submitted, when the first violation came out, we submitted and I exchanged conversations and emails with Mr. Manko and, and Attorney Rubin. And basically that case was then uh, <clears throat> basically because it had the wrong folio number essentially. What you're looking at here, just so that the board has a full view of this, there are 23 docks or boat slips in this area. It's a marina by whatever you call it, it's a marina. And so it's our position that unless the town of Highland Beach has a 100%, we cannot rent a boat slip at all. These boat slips are in a marina. 
They're governed by the Declaration of Covenants and Restrictions for Grand Cay Estates at Boca Highland Yacht Basin. And under that, there's about 40 pages of rules and regulations for maintaining the boat slips, for renting out the boat slips, for the owner having to do what is right to maintain the docks in good, good repair. There is no restriction whatsoever on the rent of a boat slips. I sent a letter to all five associations right around Bramer Isle, and the only one that responded was Corona House, which said they have no such restrictions on renting boat slips. I totally 1000% understand the city of Highland Beach saying that the boat slip immediately behind the Pierce's house that's on the intercoastal cannot be rented unless that person lives in the Pierce's house. But when you look at this property and it's cited in the, this package that I sent to the city, there's 23 boat slips. None of them are attached to any property. They're all around the Bramer Isle condo. The boat slip that my clients rent out is rented by a resident of Dalton Place condominium by Tom Ernst. Ernest, sorry. And basically, so he's a resident of Highland Beach. He's a resident of the local condo right by there. So if my client owned this in a different name, this entire ordinance wouldn't apply because then he wouldn't be within a thousand feet of what he owns. So I'm, I, I don't quite understand. My clients own these properties for 27 years. He's rented these docks out for 27 years. There's never been an issue. And despite what everybody's saying, he's not making a buttload of money on this. He's making like $300 a month. He's not going to be able to retire on it. So the whole point is, one, it's a marina. It's not an ancillary use to his house by any stretch of the imagination. It's not even, he's got a beautiful dock behind his house. So it's our position, the ordinance is not applicable for this particular location of boat slips. And as such, they're not in violation of this ordinance. Because, I mean, unless you're enforcing them against all 23 other boat slip owners, then you're selectively enforcing this against my client. Or you're requiring that my client own 1% of the person's boat, so then he's not in violation of the ordinance, which doesn't make any sense for my client to have to violate the law in order to become in compliance with the law. And, and that's basically where we stand. I mean, 27 years, five boat slips out of 23, Bramer Isle rents out boat slips as well, but nobody's citing them. So, I mean, it's got to be fair for everybody. If there's a 100% restriction on renting boat slips, then that's what the ordinance should say. Instead of the ancillary use or accessory use, because my client doesn't use these as an accessory to his house by any stretch of the imagination. So I, I'm willing to answer any questions you have. Um, I'm hoping that uh, Mr. Manko has been able to review my re response. Thank you. Uh, does the town staff have any uh, questions of the offender's attorney? Jason? Um, no, I, I mean, it, again, this is my interpretation of the ordinance and the board's interpretation of the ordinance. Um, you know, I, my interpretation is for the first violation, accessory marine facilities shall not be used for commercial purposes. Um, that that leads me to believe that marine facilities should not be rented or leased. Um, and then the other ordinance, if it's if it is not being leased and it's a guest ordinance, it's a, it's a guest staying there. This ordinance limits that guest to sixty days, uh, keeping their boat there. So. Um, that that's you know I open this case because that's my interpretation of the ordinance. Um, that's you know, the it's okay. it's up to the board I guess to decide whether that interpretation is correct or um, it's interpreted another way. Thank you. Uh, I have a question to Mr. Rubin. Uh, what is the our uh, attorney's interpretation of the ordinance? Well, ultimately, it's it's your interpretation. The yeah. um, I mean, the town's. And again, I represent the board, so I really, I'm not advocating the town's position. I can't act in that dual role. Um, but, you know, the, you the, town's the town's position is that, as far as I understand it, 
is that, you know, these, it's not a marina, these are deeded, you know, on the south, on the, docks to the, to on the south side of Raymer Isles, there is actually a marina where they lease slips to people who reside there. These, um, as far as I know, are an anomaly. They're actually deeded slips. Um, not sure how they came to be or why they came to be. It's a rather unusual situation. Um, so the, the town's position, as Jason expressed, is that they're, um, that these are not to be leased out to third parties. It's not, you know, I know Mr. Roy said it's a marina. I mean, there is that declaration that calls it a yacht basin, um, but they're separately, you know, marinas generally lease out slips. These are separately deeded parcels. And Thank Ingrid you. Allen, the town planner, is also on, on, the, on the meeting, um, if you have questions for her. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Chairman, uh, of the 23 spaces, uh, deeded spaces, uh, how many are leased out to uh, boat owners who may not own the, the, the space at all? I don't know. We'd have to get a complaint for us to do something about that for, the, for Mr. Manco to go and investigate. Well, are the Pierces the only violators uh, that we're talking about here, or the only one we have in front of us right now? If there's other ones, uh, we're not aware of them that I'm aware of. Uh, Jason, is that the case? So I, I re received a complaint for um, a couple of personal watercrafts. Um, there's a couple other boats on those slips we're talking about that are registered to the owners of the slips. There are a couple other personal watercrafts that I'm waiting for the police to get back their registration numbers, then I'll be able to match up if see if it's the owner or not, but that I'm waiting for responses from the police department. Right now, I don't have those responses. So if, you know, the cases will be opened, if they're not, if they don't belong to the owner of the boat slip, a case will be opened on those ones. Thank you. Uh, does it, any more of the town staff have any questions of the offender? All right, does the uh, offender wish to offer a rebuttal testimony or ask any questions of the staff? Um, I would, thank you, Chairperson. Um, what I'd like to say is so, <coughs> for Mr. Manko's testimony, if my client owned this as ABC LLC versus Ken and Carol Pierce, this ordinance would not apply because then it's not an accessory use because that company would not be within Highland Beach city limits. Is that correct? Refer, could you repeat the question again? If these five docks or boat slips, excuse me, were owned by ABC LLC, mm -hmm. a Netherlands LLC, mm -hmm. this particular ordinance then would not apply because it's not an accessory use because they're not a Highland Beach resident. And it's not within a thousand feet of that company's residence. Well, I, I would look, what I'm looking at is the boat registration ownership and the ownership of the, the boat slip. So, um, yeah, that, that may be a problem. If the, if the boat slip was owned by an LLC and maybe I would dig into it if the registered agent of that LLC was the owner of the boat, then maybe that would be, you know, an acceptable, uh, you know, oh. within the limits of the ordinance. If, if not, uh, if it doesn't match up, then yeah, that might be a case I would open up and bring before the board for them to make a decision. Well, the whole point is, is does the town of Highland Beach expressly mm -hmm. prohibit the renting of docks? So it says, uh, I know section 3068 G1A says, accessory marine facilities shall not be used for commercial purposes. Um, B goes on to, it does mention it shall not be rented or leased to non-residents or any other persons other than the owners or residents of the principal dwelling or dwellings um, and goes on to define guest. Uh, but I feel that section A is a, is a kind of a blanket shall not be used for commercial use. I, I, that's how I interpret it. They, they, there's a blanket prohibition on renting boat slips. All right, so that brings up the second issue I have. There is no principal residence for this dock. They're, they're boat slips. They're deeded boat slips, as Attorney Rubin stated. And as such, what are they an accessory to themselves? They're, they're designed to be a boat slip. 
So their whole purpose is to dock a boat. And unless there's a prohibition against renting dock slips, because when my client bought these, the Grand Cay Estates of Boca Highland Yacht Basin provided that you could rent these out. So the city's ordinance basically is almost a taking of these boat slips because the whole purpose of these docks, boat slips, was to rent them out or to use them. Obviously, he doesn't have five boats. He doesn't need five boat slips. But I would be interested to hear what Miss Allen has to say about what this particular parcel of 23 boat slips is considered by the town of Highland Beach. Miss Allen? Yes. Can you hear me? Yep. Go ahead. Yes. Um, with regards to that question, I, I will say that staff hasn't done an analysis um, of those uh, parcels there, so I can't really answer that question. I mean, the the item that's before the board, obviously, um, the uh, Mr. Manko has you know made his uh, case, and um, the only thing I I think I can add to this is. Um, I was looking at the permitted uses table and there is a ref, the only reference actually in the code to the, to the word marina is for a commercial marina. And the code uh, is actually section 30-67B, uh, which is a list of permitted uses, um, clearly prohibits in every single zoning district in the town, a commercial marina. Now the code doesn't define what a commercial marina is, but just want to put it out there to the board, um, this issue of, I know that the word marina was brought up previously. But as again, as, as far as Mr. Roy's question, again, staff hasn't done an, an assessment or an analysis of those parcels. So I can't really speak to that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Roy, do you have any more uh, comments or questions? Well. The only thing I got to say is, again, 23 boat slips. I know of at least three boat slips that are leased out by other people other than Mr. Pierce. Well, then you should give that information to our uh, our uh, town. Who are you asking, sir? Yeah. I'm asking the town attorney. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, you were asking, the first question was, do they have riparian rights? Was that your first question? Yeah. Is it, and does the, does the dock transfer on sale of the property no those docks are owned separately as far as my understanding is these docks were deeded separately it's it's an anomaly um i've never seen anything like this before um you know usually you'll have a marina where people were lease boat slips or you'll have a multi-family development that'll have accessory boat slips um that's very common but this situation is, you know, it's a basin where these, these water parcels upon which the docks are constructed were actually deeded out to third parties. I don't know if, if it was originally intended for the people in Grand Cay Estates or who didn't have their own docks or I, I and as Ingrid said, you know, she hasn't done a a detailed analysis of it. I don't know how this came to be. It's a it's a very unusual situation. I have a question. If Mr. Pierce were, were to sell his uh, residence, I don't know if it's a condo or a home. Uh, what happens to the dock that he owns? He would he would still own the dock. I mean, it's not it's not. See, that's that, and I you know, it's not tied to his residence he owns a residence on the intracoastal but he owns these water parcels upon which the docks are constructed in the basin and they're not necessarily tied together they're not tied together Roy, you had your hand up yeah it, it would appear to me that uh, the intent of the bylaw was to prevent owners from uh, renting out docks adjacent to their property for commercial purposes. Uh, then we go into the question of what does commercial mean? Does it mean a fishing boat? Uh, does it mean the uh, paying of a, a fee to rent a dock by a pleasure boat? I'm not quite sure how it applies. So I'll go back to uh, 
what was said, um, Attorney Rubin, it's an anomaly. It's uh, unique. I mean, are we are it's we chasing a, a dead horse? Doesn't uh, possibly it doesn't apply to the code as it uh, is written, and uh, maybe there's there's no problem with it. Maybe this is something that the town commission has to straighten out. Exactly. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Perhaps. <Second that. laughs> If, if that's possible uh, right it, it is a very I, i've been i've been doing this for and waterfront communities for almost 30 years i've never seen anything like this well could, could i suggest yeah. something in the middle of this go ahead perhaps what we do is further investigation between miss allen attorney rubin and mr manko and i and if it's determined that these constitute a commercial use or if they're deemed an accessory, I mean, I can be persuaded. I just need to be persuaded because as Mr. Lenson, I believe, I, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Yeah, that's fair he's, enough. He's not <laughs> renting out shrimp charters or, or party boats. He, one person such as yourself is leasing a boat slip because they don't live on the water in Highland Beach. That was kind of the purpose of these things. So not that's everybody- in commercial. That is commercial, though. I, in my opinion, that's commercial. If you're selling or if you're leasing a slip or a dock, that's a commercial transaction. I agree with you. Well, well, because, what would you do with a parking space if you had a second space that you leased out to a that's someone commercial in your too. community? Is that a commercial uh, transaction, yes, it, yes, or is that a is. private transaction? No, that's, it is. It, it's commercial, but I don't know that there's any. Uh, I don't know if there's a statute against that. Yeah, right. that, that's what right. I was going to say. That you can argue whether it's commercial or not, but th this this ordinance specifically calls out uh, boat slips. That's what we're here talking about. Correct. Well, it sounds like maybe we've got a, a situation where the town commission really needs to clarify exactly what the rule is. Uh, well, and I would also hope if they did clarify that, that they paid attention to the covenants and restrictions that my client bought these docks under. Boat slips. I keep calling docks. I apologize. Boat slips. I, I think the mayor could be very helpful with this, being that he lives in that community. Yes. he's. I think he's the uh, president of the board there, isn't he? Right. I think he could be very helpful. Yeah. Uh, are there any any other uh, individuals that wish to speak at this time that have an that could be uh, that problem? could be a conflict of interest also <laughs> having having, yeah. having the mayor uh, comment on it. Uh, I, I would appreciate the town just rolling this over until we got further information as to commercial versus non-commercial use and whether this anomaly, as Attorney Rubin said, applies to this particular ordinance. I mean, if my client's in violation, I'll tell him to move the boat. But after having done it for 27 years, it just seems like this anomaly is now hitting him in the forehead. And he's not a rule violator by any stretch of the imagination. Mr. Manko could verify that his house has never had a code violation and that these boat slips have been maintained yeah. for 27 years. So yeah. I would appreciate the ability to get clarification. All right. Thank you. Uh, the public hearing is now closed. Uh, does uh, how does the board uh, wish to proceed on this? Is there any uh, any uh, conversation we need to have amongst well, ourselves? What's well, everybody's opinion on this? I, I mean, my opinion on it is that as the, as the section uh, thirty sixty eight G uh, and one uh, A and G one B are written that you know if this is considered a commercial activity which i think that it is but the, the question i have is whether or not this falls into the definition of an accessory marine facility because this is section 3068 is specifically accessory marine facilities are we positive that that this specific slip area is considered an accessory marine facility and not something else, some kind of hybrid? 
And if, if it is considered an accessory marine facility, then I mean, I, this, the statute here is clear. It's pretty clear that it should not be used for commercial purposes and, and a slip should not be uh, rented to a person who, who doesn't reside in that dwelling for, I mean, it's pretty specific. And I'm not saying I agree with it at all. You know, I, I just, I'm just, but that's not our job. You know, our job is to enforce the code as it, as it is constructed. I mean, so, I mean, if, if the commission could clarify the statute, because the way I'm looking at it right here, uh, it, it's a violation. And then, you know, the whole issue of um, selective enforcement, that's a whole nother issue, you know? I mean, I, I, we're only here today because somebody complained, uh, somebody complained about this particular, this specific uh, individual slip, but if, I mean, it, we're not supposed. We're not. We're not going after anybody. You understand? So if if, if everyone else uh, parked, you know, docked in these slips does not reside in those uh, in those homes that own the slips, then they're all in violation. I until, agree. I until, agree. Some, until somebody complains, we can't just uh, you know start finding or you know uh finding violations against anyone so this one is here before us today and it's not our job to decide whether we like the statute or, or this particular section of of the of the town's uh code i mean our job isn't to make the code i don't think although i don't know maybe maybe we can uh I, at one point i think we had the discretion to uh, at least propose amendments or, uh, you know, propose that additions are made or deletions to certain codes. Remember when we were like writing, we, we were actually writing codes at one point and- It was a different- This board's, this board's it. It was a different commission that asked for that at the time. Yeah. Um, Seems to me, uh, I would say that if you allow this one to pass, uh, then what happens with the next five or 10 complaints we get uh, about this particular marina? Um, uh, a suggestion might be to not put any penalty on this and ask the commission to clarify exactly uh, what the rules are uh, in the meantime, because uh, you can't give one person a pass uh, and then find uh, 10 more people uh, that are doing the same alleged violation. We had a case like this a year and a half ago, roughly, and uh, we uh, uh, gave the uh, individual, uh, I think, 90 days to remove the boat, and uh, they didn't like our uh, decision. They took it to court up in West Palm, and I understand they lost. Ah. Yeah, um, well, that so case was, our a, decision. It was a slip was a boat dock or a slip behind the, the person's home. It, yes, you know, I remember. A little different than this situation. I'll, I'll put forth a, a position that uh, the statute may not apply because the, the dock itself is not attached to the home. It's in a separate location along with a multitude of other docks. And I think it's outside the purview of the statute. So therefore there's no foul. I would like clarification on what an accessory, the definition of an accessory marine facility, so we could determine whether this actually falls within that statute. I don't think the town allows any commercial uh, operations except for the hotel. Yeah. Uh, all other commercial uh, uh, operations are uh, considered violations. In my building, they sell, they lease uh, parking garages. I mean, people lease their parking garages to other people. I mean, how is that? That's commercial also. If we're going to start, you know, getting into know. the minutia of what constitutes a commercial activity. The, um, Mr. Schlam, do you want do you want the town planner to weigh in on the accessory use issue or? Who's, I, talk, who's talking? I can't oh, see. It's it? it's a 
the turn. Okay. okay. <laughs> on Ruben. Um, yeah. Did, uh, did you want Ingrid to weigh in on, you had a question as to yes, whether. That, that would be great. Uh, and if, uh, Ingrid, if you could explain accessory. Yes. So um, again, I'm, I'm reading directly from the code. It's section 30-68 G1. And again, it, the, the subheading here is accessory marine facilities. It says accessory use. Accessory marine facilities including docks, piers, launching facilities, boat basins, resetting patterns, and lifting and mooring devices are permitted as accessory uses in all residential zoning districts. Um, I can also, well, I'd like to advise the board that the town code also provides a definition of an accessory structure, which is in section 30-131. And it means a detached building or other improvement, which is clearly incidental to the principal structure and is, sub and is subordinate in area, extent, size, or purpose, and serves only the principal structure. I don't know if that provides you some more clarity or maybe raises more questions, but just referencing what the zoning code says. Thank you very much. Uh, is there a motion to approve uh, Mr. Manco's uh, recommendation or not? Is there a motion to do so? Mr. Manco, would you please read what you recommended? Town uh, recommends 30 days to comply the violations um, at a cost of $250 a day per day of the violation existing and $250 for the cost of prosecution. Is there a motion to that effect? $250 would start accumulating after the 30 days. Is that correct? correct? Yes. Yes. What if we pushed it out let's say like 90 or 120 days and ask oh. the uh, commission to uh, uh, address it. Yes. Uh, first we need a motion and then we can do an amendment to it, uh, changing the uh, time period. I move for, I move for 90 days, uh, 90 days continuance on this and to have clarification by the commission on this issue. All right, so you're not you're not moving, you're not making a motion to uh, give them a certain period of time to remove the boat and a fine would uh, proceed at that point. You're asking that we uh, throw this over to the commission. Is that what your motion is? Yes. Is there a second to that motion? I second it. It's been moved and seconded that uh, we take 90 days uh, to see if the town commission can clarify uh, the statute. And after that point, uh, I presume we would uh, address this again if they do not. Is that uh, your intention, Mr. Uh, Miles? Yes, that's correct. Uh, let's have a uh, recorded vote from the deputy town clerk. Member Slam. Your motion? Yes. Okay. My motion. Member, so. Member Perlman? Yes. Member Leanson? Yes. Member Cherubini? Yes. Member Perlo? Yes. Member Person Burnage? Yes. Motion carries. So in 90 days, if the town doesn't resolve this, then we'll be back here. <laughs> Yes, sir. Correct. All right. Uh, let's see the next item. Chair Burson Burnage. Yes. I'm free to leave the meeting. Sure, I, certainly. I, yes. You're, there's nothing else that you have to deal with in the meeting. Thank you for being here. Appreciate thank it. You very much. Appreciate the opportunity. You're welcome. All right. Do any of the board members have any report that they wish to give? All right, there being none, uh, the deputy town clerk, please read uh, announcements. November 5th at 1.30 p.m., there's a town commission meeting. November 11th, town, 11, uh, town hall will be closed in observance of Veterans Day. Uh, November 12th, there's a planning board uh, meeting. November 17th, there's a town commission meeting. That concludes the announcements. 
Thank you. Uh, the uh, chair will now uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I make the motion. It's been moved. Is there a second to adjourn? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Thank you, everyone. Time is 246. Thank, Thank you. you.